Hey guys, Rusty here, and just coming in at the top of this episode to let you know what you are in for in this one. If you've seen the latest episode, we were uh, working on loads for the hot dog. Uh, you can click the link up there and go watch that. That's, that's the entertaining one. This here uh, came about because Josh was editing this video and he said there is a lot of content here. He basically filmed the entire session with Steve at my place uh, in the reloading room and there was a lot and a lot of good stuff, uh, especially from Steve. And so we kind of we kind of wanted to put that in, but of course, you know, in a 10 minute video, you can only put in a few minutes of it. So this is effectively that whole session raw. It's somewhere around 50 minutes or thereabouts. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, it is very raw. It's not particularly edited uh, and there's there's lots of stuff in there. Hopefully you can glean something out of it. Uh, Steve is a very knowledgeable guy. We've done plenty of videos with him over the Projector Warehouse channel. Um, but this is uh, this is him in his element, helping us load, teaching us some stuff and taking us through his process. So let's get into it. All right, so we want to, I've, I've got a handful of brass, Steve, and I want to run your produce. Yep. Done a little bit of pra uh, work with them on powder, but yep. we, want to, we want to focus on seeding depth because that's where you are saying is the first place to go. What, what, so right. primarily the first thing we need uh, is a spent case. Yep. Um, without turn that uh, any primers in at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a projector and we need your rifle and we need your bolt. We can do all of these things. Let me uh, grab them all out and pull down the doors. Hey Rusty, Yo. Yo. what do you want me to do while you do all that? Ah. Here you want to all go, whatever you like. Remove all of the bolt. Oh, Thank you. Okay, we don't need to worry about removal of the firing pin, but we do need to remove the ejector pin. And the cloth, so that if the pin or the spring fires out that we can catch it. Got a weight off there. So. It may be, may work and a small hammer. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> no, I've got a small one. Sorry. Is full. Yep. Right. So that's done. Keep that in a safe place. Now Hold that. that. <laughs> now that that's, that's done. You're, that you're a safe place. All right. We've just got to do one more thing. I've got to get the pin. Not. All <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> safe place. This guy. Okay. Mm. If we can, uh, got a small pair of pliers. We can remove that without. Damaging it. Small. Everything's so small. The bigger is better, Steve. Bigger is better. <laughs> what are you in the 50 cars? Excellent. This goes with that at Suzanne's. Did he just Apparently. call you Suzanne? Apparently, my name's <laughs> Suzanne now. Okay. Resistance on that bolt because it hasn't been falling sized. It's fine. No, but it looked like it was tight even just before. before you it was, it, it is, yeah. but it, that's the one thing you can't explain by feel. Right, so here it is. That just means it's got a good solid cam lock on the bolt face. That's all. Yeah, I just thought that was supposed to fall down pretty much. Mm, There's no. still pressure. He took the projector out, not the uh, no, if you take the um, firing pin out, it would. At this particular point in time, 
I'm not going to worry about the just a little bit of resistance, extra resistance there being applied. So it's okay. We'll should we that. Just run a little bit of a neck size on that. Yep. Give you a neck size and die. It's the full length die. Yeah, I just put the next neck die on it, and I'm only going to just pinch the first mill or so. Cutie thinks we run neck size and dies. Sorry? No, no neck size and dies. Okay, right. Yeah. Do you set up your full length die? Just... No, I can still use the, I can still use the, uh, the, the full length die. Oh, it's not running it all the it way. It is a deluxe die set. It does have a neck size and die. I've just never used it. So guys, we don't neck size, just so you know, yeah. we don't neck size. Th this is, this a, this is, is only for a specific for, purpose. Yeah, this how is would only... you do this? How would you do this if you didn't have a neck sizing die? You, you would can, just you can run still it use the full, the full length, but not all the way up? Correct. So you're only going to just size the top of the neck? And, and you're basically going to be guessing because you can't see. Yes. Just and sometimes you'll go too far and you'll have to go and grab another case. Another case, case yeah. yeah. So because you only want some tension on the bullet to hold it in the place, in without, the place. without locking it in. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want it to fall in the case, but you also don't want it to be held so tight like it does when you completely size it. Correct. Right, so that has not been set to high. I have no idea what the settings on that, by the way. It's fine, it should be able to feel that. Have you got lube on your case? Not for the amount that we're going to be doing, well, it's not going to matter. Stuff case, it's okay. A millimetre of stuff case? It's not. <laughs> It's the body that sticks there. It's right. It's an exercise. Oh, you sorry, you do have an exercise. No. Yeah. 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 Copy. A little bit more. The only time you'll ever use an exercise, guys. Yeah. Just say that Pretty again. much. Yep, looks alright. Well, it's certainly better. Mm hmm. Now. I want your bullet seater is that one there. Just enough, eh? No, no, not, not enough, quite. not enough. So you're, you're basically jamming into the land at the moment, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And he's going to keep seating it until he feels it not jamming into the lens anymore, or just mildly. have an ejector pin on it so it can be really unfriendly. <laughs> you can see where it's biting very solidly there. Yep. So it's jammed and I didn't have to close the bolt to know that it was jammed because it was tight. Yep. So I'm just going to set it down set it there a little bit further because it was only about half the bolt it was only about one third to a half on the way down, so okay. um, she's way out too far, and that's. And that's gone in too far. That's okay.
does that feel? Tight, but you want it biting. So what are you uh, seeing there? I haven't got enough purchase here. Once it passes the first band, yep. there's not biting on the shank. So I'm getting variation there. That needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's the... Your next size that's was this one here? Yeah, next size is that one. Yeah. The other thing, have you got these um, steel walls? Because there's a bit of a burr yep. on the case mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the ego always gets such a good burst hang out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Not just your ego. Right, you can just see that first millimetre or two, you can see that little faint line, that's just enough purchase. Oh, is it what? Yeah, that's, that's great. Much more better, as my English teacher used to say. <laughs> <laughs> Looks much more better. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's so you, you're getting it far enough up the. Yep. yep. See, what was happening before, um, I didn't have enough tension here, and when it gets past the band, mm -hmm. it still needs to be able to grab the neck and still have. It's a little undersized. Uh, uh, but it needs to have enough grip to hold it mm -hmm. without, stop, without preventing uh, movement. Yep. Gotcha. And what was happening, I was, I was pushing it in, uh, and then the, um, the, the band, uh, it, it was moving and then the band was pulling it back out again, so I was wasting my time trying to get the, the measurement. That's better. You can actually see now. See where the lands are marking. Yeah, you can see it marking the coating. Right. You can just you see the marker there. Yeah. It's, it's engaged. Now we've got our reference marker mm -hmm. for deduction of uh, deduction of uh, jump. Yeah. So if we're going to use that as a measurement and work back and work back from there, so. Yeah. Because we've, um, we're using a lathe turn bullet that's very consistent in, in its form factor, mm -hmm. we don't need to work, use an ogive comparator, we just need a pair of verniers okay. and deduct 1.27 millimetres. Okay. And for some verniers. Yep. Oh. Did you get that? Can you see that? It's only fairly faint, but you can see the engagement of the lands at, um, at the base of the ogive. Can you see it? So how do you know how many thou of tension into the lens that is? You there? don't. But, uh, and, and it's especially difficult on uh, VLD style mm -hmm. ogives. All yeah. you know is that it's engaged. Yeah. But when you're, when you're using that bandwidth of between 40 and 60 and you take the middle ground, yeah. you can be out 5 thou and it doesn't matter. Yeah. It can be out 10 thou and it doesn't matter. Yeah. So you were able to get the bolt completely closed. closed. And push that bullet into the case neck because I'm only holding. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A two mil, uh, yeah. One, one, two mil of um, neck sizing tension on there. So there will be a little bit of um, it, that. The, this measurement will have a little bit of in, a, a in, little bit of play. It, yeah. but it, it's not critically important on a VLD. Yeah. Because now we know that it's engaged, and whether it's five thou or ten thou in or not, we're going to back it off fifty. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah, we're coming so, back so far. And, and then, and then, you, even if you're only forty there off, uh, we can go. You know what? 
we can take it another 10, we can mm -hmm. take it another 10 and still be within the band, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, right. Seventy-five point six six. Uh, Seventy-four point. Okay, we're going to call that seventy-five point six five. Seventy-four point six five. Seventy-four point four point four five. Seventy-five point four. Seventy-five point three eight. Seventy-five point three eight millimeters is what yep. we are aiming for. Yep. We're currently on seventy-five point six five. Yep. I work in inches, lots of them, all the inches. Are you lots of friends? Yeah. <laughs> Hang out with all your mates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 75, what? sorry, 75. <laughs> what, what is it, 75? 75.38 is what we're looking for for a 50 thou jump. Yep. So that's your bullet suitor. Yeah, that hasn't been set up though, so. No, no. no, no, no. That's exactly right, it hasn't been set up, but it may not have enough adjustment here to get us where we need to go. Yeah, so you might need to... Um, I might need to loosen this. should have a fair bit. Yeah, let's see where it goes. Give it a crack. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was quite a lot in there. <laughs> might have gone too far. 75.65. We've come five, we've only come five there. Yeah, that's all right. Well, sorry, five, uh, I beg your pardon. 50 more. Now, now we're mixing them across. You, won't you get different readings on a on a completely sized case, like with the neck? No. Because it'll have more purchase, so it'll change seating? No, no, it won't. All right. The measurement from there yeah. to the engagement there is the critically important thing. You can have a different case neck length, you can have different dimensions in here. That dimension to that dimension there is the critically important one. Yeah. And we've gone too far already. We have. So. Got too keen. Uh, yeah, I just didn't believe there was that much um, uh, in it. But, okay. Um, That's all right. So we do uh, have, some. Have you got a, a bullet puller? Right there. Right. I've got Thank that you. one or the cam lock, but we can go with that one. We only need to nudge it out a little bit, don't we? Yeah. Oh. Shell holder. The shell holder, Rusty. Yeah. Do you need Now we're making headway. way down. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ooh. Right here in the That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> that will do. That'll do. Right. Now That's you've got your reference length. Yep. That is 50 thou. Uh, is your 50 thou jump. Yep. Now that we know what that is. Yep. And we know that it's 75.38. Yep. Now we can run it through and I can give you a guideline on the case, uh, on the amount of powder. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, and what we're going to do is say, right, what, you, what brass are you going to use? Lapel. And I know what the case capacity is. Well, when I know what the case capacity is for the lapio, and if you can't tell me, we'll have to measure it. We'll do that next. And what we'll do is we'll get uh, a full-length three-sized case, mm -hmm. and we'll put a dead primer in it. Yep. And then we'll put some distilled water mm -hmm. uh, in it, and we'll measure it till the meniscus is absolutely dead level with the top. Yep. And then we'll weigh the difference between yep. the thing fully loaded and dry and empty. So obviously you measure it dry and empty first, mm -hmm. rather than sit around waiting for it to dry out. Yep. With your distilled water, you fill it up. Mm -hmm. Then you get an, uh, a meniscus or the surface tension is dead set level with the case mouth. You do this for about f five, maybe ten uh, pieces of brass. Mm -hmm. And you take the average of your case capacity. And from there on in, it's a piece of cake. Right. Because yep. you now know what your case capacity is. Yep. Because it's based on how far that bullet is seated out. Yes. And I can calculate that on on quick load. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't do it that way, you end up in a situation where you're, you know what the case capacity is, but you're trialling an error. Yes. Okay. But that is now your reference round. That's it. I'm going to draw it a different colour so I don't put it in a gun and then... Who would do that? Who would do that and then have a 30 second uh, timeout because uh, during a match. Because of an ND. Not an ND. No, no, wrong terminology. Hey, yeah. um, Thanks for it. There is one other thing that we should do mm -hmm. with that just for just colouring peace of mind. Then we've got pink. And that is... Yeah, I've got his one prepared. And that is... Ha <laughs> ha, speak of the devil. Oh, I was going to colour that. Yeah. Make sure it fits in the magazine. Woohoo! That's going to be tight. Well, that's might, all right. We might but have no choice but to have some more jumpage. You might have to, you might have to come in another. Mm. You might, so this is this is important stuff. But to 50, check. fifty thousand is where you want to start, isn't it? Yeah. So that's right. Mm. So now we're going to come. Now we're going to have to come down to um, sixty thousand. Yep. Because the magazine won't allow. Okay, perfect. Have a look at that. You got no binder plate in there yet too, so Correct. if you were running a binder plate you'd be having to come out even more. Yeah, another another five or ten thou, eh? Mm-hmm. And four fifteen. So it'll be seventy five point one five right. millimeters. Start there. Seventy it'll be seventy five point one five millimeters. Yeah. Well, that's that. See if we need to go even more. Let's come down another um, 0.15 millimeters. So, like, what's that? Two thousand? Yeah, oh. oh, we are mixing up uh, languages here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's because there. Yeah, just come down one notch. I've come down two. All right, we'll go back one. Yep. Just creep up on it, eh? Yep. Scare it. That way we don't have like to go and Slowly, it, slowly, slowly, and then... Ah! That actually scared me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more? <laughs> You're one more notch. What did you call him? <laughs> did you run or something? Oh, my back. 
Is your new chair too comfortable? Is that the problem? Well, that's that's close enough. That's close. Close Let's enough. Have a look at how that looks in the mirror, go. That'll fit. Oh, that'll fit. That'll fit easy. So we're now at like a sixty tower jump. That's now a sixty tower jump, and it will and it will fit. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. I'm happy, I mean, I'm not shooting it, but... Yeah, that's it, I'm, and I'm not very good at shooting, so, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, our initial cartridge overall length was, what, 76.65? 70... I've got it right here somewhere. It was, uh, 75.65. 75.65? Yeah. Yeah. Was the initial? Yeah. Yep. Well, I had to come down 1.27, uh, not 0.27. So, we've got a long way to come down. The original one, when it was bumping the lens, yeah, yeah, it was 75.65 millimetres. We've got to come down 1.27 off that, so it's 74. Uh, 74 74.38. 70 Do we need to check the footage, Taylor? <laughs> See what we actually said? I wrote 75.65, we thought we weren't... Nah, no, nah, that would make sense, because that does look like a very long round. Yeah, that's right. For so a 90 grainer, that's still seated right out. Can yeah, yeah, that that's, that's what I'm saying. So if, yeah. the, if the initial bump, if the initial touching the lens was 75.65, yep. yeah. we have to come 1.27 off that. To go 50 there. Okay. Alright, uh, so a bit further. Right, like another 10, 20 there, hey? Uh, we're, 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 we're 1.65, that's like a 30, that's 35, uh, 38, yeah, it's 74.38 and we're 75.13 at the moment. Let's see what that runs at. Don't move it, no. Still a long way to go? Oh yeah, fair way to go. It's hard to get a feel because we haven't sized that whole Correct. neck. Yeah. It feels like it's not even touching it, but it is moving it. Mm, Did it. I just land on it? You landed on it to the Kanoka. <laughs> get a number of that. <laughs> to the Kanoka. Oh, you, can't, you can't teach that. Like that's, that's pure touch. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <All right>. 74.38 <laughs> is your reference. Oh. And there it is. So you don't change that now. No, we, t we leave uh, that. You, you lock that in place without moving it. Yeah. I think it's... Uh... And your jump... Uh, sorry, your cartridge overall length now. Rusty, you got your Allen key to lock this seating nut in place. And that, will, and that will now dance up and down the... There you, you go. go. So that looks oh. better. Sorry, guys. We had a uh, miscommunication. Just that Allen key just to... Yeah, the Allen key there that we can't get on. So you can't get that. What about here? Uh, and that. Just finger. Just, 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 that. just pretend. Just pretend it's time. That. That's it. We don't want to back it out. Okay, so we, get, we come back to, we had about two mil of purchase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would uh, grab the um, inner shank. Yep. With enough resistance for it to hold and bite and be able to remove it without it slipping up and down. Yep. Now that that's done, mm -hmm. Uh, we, we found out at the distance at which it was engaging the lands. Yes. We've deducted 1.27 millimetres, which is 50 thou. Mm -hmm. And so we've now got 10, 10 thou to go either way. Yep. We've got, uh, but now that we've got that reference, yep. we can go right. Now we can calculate the case capacity based on the, um, the, a full length sized piece of brass with a dead primer and the H2O in it. We do that for, with five different pieces of brass and get an average. Yep. And with Lapua, it's going to be very, very close. Mm -hmm. But even with Lapua, you can get an anomaly. And, sure. and so if you've got four out of the five that are really, really tight and one that's off with the pixies, you say, well, that one that's off with the pixies, we'll use that for this kind of work. That's the name of my first band, actually. Off with the pixies. Yeah. yeah. The okay. Um, so if you if you <laughs> throw <laughs> wow. If you, if you do if you do find uh, an anomaly, you use it for other things like barrel fowlers or for doing this kind of work. Yep. You're not going to use it again, but it it, it still has a sure. uh, uh, a tool. Can I have a look just so we get a barrel fowlers bit of a. 
I know it's not scientific, but it's just nice <laughs> to have it. It's nice to have a little look at like how much, how deep yeah, it is. roughly how much neck purchase you've got on there, and how close you are to the to, to the up. shoulder and stuff. Yeah, now, you're gonna have quite a lot of case capacity in there with that round, definitely. That's I know, right. my, I know, mine are seated yeah. quite far down and, into and, the. And, that, and that's actually uh, that's a really really important point, right? Having it seated out like that with the extra case capacity is important when you're using a slower burning powder. Mm. So you need the extra engine room uh, for it to work. But see the base of that there? And this is universal. This is not un unique to our product. See that uh, uh, where the boat tail starts? Mm -hmm. yep. You really do not want that below the bottom of the case neck. Okay. Yep. Because that will um, bell your case neck out after repeated firings and it will thicken it up and then you'll get uneven purchase of the case neck on the bullet. Mm. And this is not unique to us, this is universal. So you want that, ideally, you would want the bottom, oh, sorry, the top of the um, boat tail to be sitting at the bottom of the case neck and the, the first band sitting at the top. But of course, when you get variations in chamber length, you, uh, yeah, and you're throat, working free ball, yeah. you, that, that's not something you can control. Because I know you were, when I got this gun done, you were concerned about that and, and, yep. and the image I took. But what, what's your thoughts now? Is that chamber length longer than it should be? Or is it okay? Well, it's not is so it much. Is it, if, 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 is it okay? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Is it ideal or perfect? No. No. But it's workable. But it sums me up. For, yeah, yeah. for this projectile here, you'd probably want that chamber slightly shorter, correct? So ideally. Have, yeah. Mm. Ideally. But if we were, if we built this gun around this projectile, which that's exactly right. Really so what you would do shorter. is you would seat it so that it sat there. Gotcha. And then you would go. Is to it your boat tail sitting too far down? No, 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 because that line there, that case neck, yeah, okay. it's not the bottom of the bullet, it's the, yeah. it, it's where the You're boat the tail shoulder. starts to chamfer. Oh, okay. That lines up, if, when that lines up with the bottom of the case neck, that would be and that top band is sitting at the in the case mouth, mm -hmm. it would then be sitting there, and then you go to Nick and say, Nick, that's the, the chamber you've got, but the free bore that I want, I want to match this, and he would do exactly what we just did in the case. Yep. When he, uh, when he was setting his uh, changer settings. Yeah. So, okay. um, but you're in, you're within the realm of. But it's going to work anyway. Yeah, because yeah. this is probably on the shorter side. Um, if you switch to, if, if Steve's in the process of developing the, um, well, what are these? These are ninety grain as you're talking well, these about. These are ninety. I'm, talking I'm, about doing some what ninety fives, one hundred. I've been or, I've been doing the maths in my head, but I've got to go back home yeah. and I'll wash it through the computer. Yeah. But if we can get it up between at 95, 98, I reckon if we can get to about ninety eight. Yeah. I'll be able to get it down to below the speed limit. Yep. I'll be able. To, it, it will actually sit down further mm. uh, yeah. into the case neck. So anyway. you've got room to go. That's probably going to be on the shorter side of. The and what I'm going to do now? Gonna what I'm going to do now is measure for my. But this is going to be only specific for this rifle and this yep. chamber the best rifle um, <laughs> the hot dog but so hot what, dog. what i'm going to do now then is go well i know how wide the front band is so all i need now is how much is exposed is is, is the excess but this is this is for you this is the measurement for and you specifically for, for no this is a measurement for you that I, that you don't need to know, <laughs> but basically what it's going to be is I, I, if I, I can actually make the bullet specific for that chamber, yep. based on that measurement. Based on that measurement to be so, able to bring that band so back. I can, I can bring that um, engagement forward 2.66 millim millimetres, yep. uh, which, will, which will participate in increasing the weight. Yeah. Right? So, the question question for you. And slow it down. Dealing with a dealing with a, a band, mm -hmm. which you don't have on a on a lead field projectile. Not all of them. Sorry, that you don't have on a on just a normal lead core projectile. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Are you having to do anything different with neck tension on the brass to equate for the fact that there's a band around there that's slightly oh. smaller than the no because what happens is the elasticity of the brass mm -hmm. be, because of the way we've structured it we don't have those old-fashioned generation one square bands yes where it can't actually grab it, grab it okay. the angle here yeah is really important the angle there which you can't see is also extremely important all right 
ballistically it's extremely important mm -hmm. but because there's only one groove in there mm -hmm. the elasticity of the brass grabs the hourglass yep mm -hmm. right and it holds it consistently and because you've got a um, uh, a dry lube on it yeah it's it's going to release smoothly mm -hmm. It's not going to release the same way that a straight shank bullet will, but because it's got a particular taper and it's coated, it will release smoothly and evenly because the coating is mm. even all the way around. But if you were running like a, if, a more the old school uh, mm -hmm. copper projectiles that do have those square bands in there, you you would be kind of having to play with your neck tension depending on where it was sitting, right? It'd get really tricky for it's having ugly. consistent it, neck tension. It's ugly tension. because it looks like this. Yeah, and the, and, and, the, and when you go to, and when you get when you do that, it feels smooth. Yep. On this one, on on the old square band style system, yeah, you feel clunk, it go clunk 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 yeah. clunk clunk. Well, clunk, not even clunk, old. Clunk. There are still some brands that run those square cut yeah. bands on the and, copper projectiles, and, and you can actually feel it, and it goes. It feels like you're driving over a corrugated road, and it goes. Yeah. You can hear it grinding, going up, and yeah. and and. Coming I couldn't even feel that seating in there, so that's definitely seating mm -hmm. pretty smooth. And the two and the two contributing factors to it are the shape or the angle leading off the front band, mm -hmm. and we and the lead-in angle or actually radius leading in onto the back band, which you can't see, mm -hmm. but they're critically important for managing transonic stability yep. and it, if you're not engaging transonic it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because it's no discount it doesn't, yeah it doesn't change anything but it will work transonically extremely well because it does okay i like shooting to transonic so i might have to get some of these transonically well, stable projectiles well that's that's actually the den that's actually the definition of um long range Mm -hmm. Did the bullet engage the transonic zone? Yeah, right. All right. So, was that like second album? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the transonic zone has three gateways. You have gateway one, which is twenty percent above the speed of sound. You have gateway two, which is the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. Then there's a little trip wire at a thousand and eighty-eight feet a second, and then gateway three is where the bullet is completely free of any. Um, transonic instability application which so it's 20 percent below the speed of sound and it's a 893 94 feet a second yeah. subsonic is that like that's that's complete it's completely subsonic yeah. as yeah. opposed to partially subsonic because what happens is when it tra travels through the transonic transonic zone you've that got pressure you've got different angles here mm. right so the velocity of the speed, sorry, the velocity of the air over this section is not going to be the same as the velocity over the straight section is not going to be the same as the velocity over this section here. Mm. So that's where you get the vibration of the going down the road at, with an imbalanced wheel at 85k. That's what causes it. Yep. You can't do it absolutely completely, but when it comes down through the transonic zone, you want that. If you look at it on a shadow graph, you'll see the pressure wave yep. mm -hmm. A starting to separate and B change its angle. Mm -hmm. The separation is going to happen. The angles though, this and this is what primarily causes the instability is that that angle there is not the same as that angle there is not the same as that angle there is not the same as that angle there yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah. <laughs> right? so, so what is the, the band, how does the band fight that? I modify the shape of the lead out and the lead in mm -hmm. so that all the bands line up. Right. So, that, so that you all the pressure angles. those pressure angles. So all the pressure waves line up. Mm -hmm. Now you can only do it to a point. It's impossible to do it perfectly. But yes. the closer you get to that, yeah. the less instability force. The the less sum is the better than none, right? The, the, yeah, it's a massive improvement yeah. step forward. And that's why the coating is black because it's just layered in black magic. <laughs> but that so that's your objective is to wherever possible and to the extent that you can line up the pressure waves yeah. so that they're all the same. Yeah. So that when the bullet comes down through the transonic zone, yeah. it's as stable as it can be. So what reference are we... round. Yep. We're now sorted. How many how many projectiles do we have? About six hundred. Oh, <laughs> probably just enough. enough. <laughs> More than we have powder or promise. I would um, uh, put, pack that in something so you don't bend the tip. Oh, bend because... over. <laughs>
What if I wanted to Don't go bend this the way? Tip the title of your six Actually, if you've got another one of the, if you've got another one of these pieces of foam, you could put that in over the top and then put oh, the foam over. Oh, I know a guy you could send. Yeah. So yeah. if we've got size cases here and yep. we've got that what set we ready to, to go, is that or we need? You're wanting the? Should we throw some powder and? You're wanting the? Well, we're going to have to run quick load first. Okay. To because, work out how. Because we, I don't know what the case capacity of this case is. Mm -hmm. I, I have to measure it. Is that so? That's something we can we can do now. Is that okay? Have you got any distilled water? Uh, Have you got any filtered possibly. water? Definitely filtered. Yes. Filtered water is good enough. Okay. Cool. I'm and have you? And we'll need another one. We'll need a full length sized case with a dead primer in it. Give me and a we'll moment. need five of them to measure. And give me a moment. Yep. Now eyes. I'm tired. I need somebody watching because if the, if the spring. Yep. You mean pops, know where it goes. I really don't want to be responsible for losing parts. Mm -hmm. I need you to hold that case into that face. That's enough, you can take the case out now. You've got this and thing I can if you finish want. it with a pin. With a pin. Nice. Thanks. That's our dummy round, yeah. Um, Taylor, if I can get you to hold the bolt up there for sure, me, just, um, just keep that vertical. And we're done. And the. All right, we're good. Okay, so load them up and grab some filtered water. And the scale's on. Scales are on. Yep. Has that got a small primer tube in it? And we'll need a pen and paper. A what? A pen and paper. Never heard of it. <laughs> Who is she? Wipe them away then. Wait right, what we're going to do now is we're going to line them up one after the other. We're going to number them one to five with a marker. That's number one. Number two. Oh. <laughs> You've got to move them all around on you. Four. Now we're going to weigh them and record them, each in turn. Weigh the water? No, no, we're going to weigh the brass empty, dry. Yep. And then we're going to weigh it full of water, so we know what the, the difference is for each to eight. Filtered water. Thank you. Okay. Scale uh, is zero. Yep. Case. Pen and paper. Yep. It's fine, yep. Case one. Case one weighs. 172.2 uh, 172.2 Case 2 weighs 171.9 171.9 Number 3 weighs 172.1 So as you say 3 weigh 172. <laughs> 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 Sorry 172.1 For number 4 Yep I'm going to say 172.0. Yeah, and 172.2. Damn it. Okay. Some reliable that is, That's really tight for gross. Yeah. Now, we're going to oh, get a funnel so that we can fill There's it with water. There's one I earlier. It's not been used. Yeah. It might see a little closer now. And I've taken just a tad too much water out. Yeah. Took 
can't even just put it over the top again. Doesn't matter. Now I just pull out the one side and dry the stuff off the outside of it. How do you do that without spilling any that's in the inside? Well, that's, yeah, which is always the interesting challenge. Now that's level. Mm -hmm. And case one now weighs. Two twenty three point four. Two twenty three point four. Point three, sorry, it came down. Two twenty three point three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Floating the scale. See how it's got them over yep. the top? Yep. It's got to get taken off. Yep. And that is now level. Yep. We measure that. Two twenty three point one. We're going to review number one. Reviewing number one. No, we're going to do it later. Doing that later. What was the difference between those two just then? Well, just, yeah, I can see a little bit of a concave, whereas that one's flat. Yeah, I can see that too. Yep. But how much was the difference, Rusty? It was... We haven't found it yeah, I've got to get the outside dried off because you don't want to be weighing the droplets on the outside at the same time. Okay, try that one. Two twenty-three point three. Oh, shocking variation. It's the same as the first case. Yeah. Yep. Two twenty-three point one. I think it looks like we're going to be up for some Lapua brass after we finish this. <laughs> We we'll stopped past the warehouse on the way yeah. out. <laughs> I don't want to put any of my brass over the thing. Are you running Remington brass? <laughs> Not quite, nearly as bad. <laughs> Star line. You'll, you'll trigger Steve in a minute. He knows how to kick me in the nuts. <laughs> hey, Star line's not too bad. 283 and a 270. I mean, 270 Remington brass. Number four. Mm -hmm. A 270 in the, in the... No, he he likes the 270. Nick, who do. doesn't like it. I know, like he's triggering everyone. Two twenty three point two. I, you you do an exercise like this, and you just got to go to Lapua. Yeah. <laughs> Use the blue boxes. <laughs> Open the blue boxes. Get yourself some Lapua brass. You being an extra, are you? <laughs> no, Eric, <laughs> Eric Cortina. Oh, right. Lapua brass is so good. You open a box. I don't even do nothing to it. Load it up. You gotta make sure there's no air pockets in it, otherwise you get really silly numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last one. Last one. Should have been doing this on my lab scales, mate, on my Two, A and D's. 223.5. And you said you wanted to do that first one again? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to call it. Was the first one slightly under, you think? No, the, yeah, the, it just looks like a little bit concave. That would um, that would line up with the, uh, with the curve of the data, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically... The first one... First one is the same weight as the yeah. last one. So I'm just going to put another little drop in there and just review number one again. Yep, no problem. 223.5 I'm guessing. 
So the lightest one we had was case two. 223.1. Correct. But look, we are also not to knock this product here. This is probably not normally a scale you would use for doing this level of measurement. Or? You, you would use the scale you have. Yeah, this that's, a, that's exactly that's right. You're not going to rush down the road and buy an A and D just to do no. this job. So, and look, plus or minus 0.1 of a grain isn't going to kill you. We're not. Yeah. No. And what we're seeing is the numbers are consistent anyway. So now, now we'll review number one, and I'm much happier with that one. Come on, two twenty-three point five. Two twenty-three point four. Just let it settle. Just point four. <laughs> No, no. Uh, point four. Point four. <laughs> That's good. Point four. Three, three, point four. So right. case number two is actually our lightest one. That's right. Good. So now we need to deduct uh, the dry weight from the wet weight. Yep. And then add them all up and then average them out. It's actually my favourite thing to do. <laughs> Don't you That's not what I heard. <laughs> dry weight from your wet weight. Wet weight. Can't even say it. So you've added all of them together already, have you? You're doing a like an average or per case? Yes, we do an average. Okay, cool. No worries. The reason how do you get an average? I don't. This what? is fancy dancy math here. I'm homeschooled. I don't know how to figure out <laughs> averages. <laughs> Surprised you can talk to other people. <laughs> yeah, my brother can't. <laughs> okay. Um, now you're under pressure to figure out how to do it. And so 220, 223.3 take 172.1 is 51.2. We now have a working case capacity at 51.2 grains of H2O. Okay. And that's yep. as accurate as you need. Yep. No problems. So you now then work out with quick load what the volume is. What is seeding. Yep, based, on the, based on the seeding depth, yep. I now turn around and go, we have this much, and we need, we're we got this, fill up with this much powder, yeah. yep. and you're like a, a fairly high capacity fill. Is that what you go for in a? I'll need to with the two to one three shortcut. Yeah, because yes. we're running a slower powder. Yep. Okay, cool. I can turf this water. Yes. Yeet. How waterproof is your camera? Oh. <laughs> oh okay. It's not my camera. Ready? You thought I was going to pour that on me. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I'm going to pour it on Taylor. Taylor! Very good. All right, well, we... Now we've defined our parameters. Yes. It's a simple calculation. Yeah. Cool. And, yeah. All right, so we, uh, we've got all our data that Steve has graciously uh, sourced for us, and we are then going to go down to Taylor's place. And tomorrow, we load and we shoot. Mm. Let's see if we can get this thing humming with some OEPs. Right, Steve? Yeah, indeed. So we, we've got our uh, cartridge overall length, which yep. is 74.38 millimetres. We've got our case capacity of 51.2 uh, grains of H2O. Mm -hmm. We now have our parameters. We can start working it out. Fantastic. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake. See you there.